We're going to see a stone cold start up this morning, uh, which will be good. I haven't reset the air fuel screw yet, so I'll, I'll get it to warm up and then I'll just play with that a little bit and then we'll take it for a spin. So that's half choke, it seemed to like half choke there on start up. <clears throat> you do have to make sure the bike's warm before you mess with the air fuel screw. But if it will warm up like this on half choke, then that's absolutely fine, there's no issues there. So looking at the camera, I can see that's one minute of warming up so far. doesn't seem too bad let me uh, take it for a quick spin Um, it wasn't running great, it was kind of intermittent, but what happened when I got here was that it just just kind of lost its power. Um, so I think something down there is intermittent. I'll have a little look. All you've got to do there is wiggle wires and see what's going on, basically, because it's when it loses power briefly, it loses spark, um, and that's causing these problems. You can see it because it all flickers. So there were two wires that were a bit iffy. This is the bike that keeps on giving. Um, the only way to test this is to test this, guys. Yesterday morning it ran to the MOT and back perfectly well. The other thing it could be doing is it could be choking because of the pilot jet, but it's also doing it on um, middle and full throttle.
is so great. Look. Look at this, look what happens, look. So, look, if I load the bike now, what? See? Take the load off. So something under the seat. Okay. Oh, that's really annoying. I was just under there. I don't know if you guys remember, but this was the second battery I bought for this bike from Tanya Batteries. Um, and and on, the first one came, you know, basically unfilled. All of the acid was, was low. So when I ordered the second one, I didn't complain about the first one, but when I ordered the second one, I said, look, the last one wasn't great. Please make sure the acid is topped up in the new one. Um, and the new one's died already. I mean, we know that I charged this last night and it was fully charged. And the battery's dead already. I mean, that's ridiculous. Tanya batteries, they're really letting themselves down. Um, I've checked the, uh, the voltage from the stator and regulator and it's, it's great. It's 14 something on idle. But, um, but the batteries now that Tanya batteries have been sending out recently, they've not been good. I know Nat had a bad one or two. I think they've been on the shelf over COVID and they've kind of, I mean, they're shelf, they, these, these self-fill lead acid batteries, they're not great anyway, but when they've sat on the shelf for two years and then been sent out, um, it's not good. So uh, I can't even do the next test run even after playing with the wires because the batteries let me down. I have just messaged them and I've said, look, you know, this is twice now that the batteries I've got from you have died within a couple of weeks. So uh, hopefully they do the right thing and either send me a new one or refund me. But their prices have gone up, guys. I used to pay 20 quid for this battery from Tanya Batteries. They're now 35. Um, that's a huge markup. And I know we're in a kind of tight um, situation economy-wise at the moment. But we are all in that situation. So for companies to earn a few more pounds, which equals, you know, millions, isn't great, I think. Uh, especially if their products on um, continuing to be good so there's my little rant there I will throw that on charge so that I can at least give this a run but if it's a dud battery anyway then the bike's not going to do its best is it um, that battery is fully charged and all I did was start the bike up a couple of times check the wiring for three or four minutes and it's died um, in fact if I get the meter on it I bet it's back down to 11 somehow gonna create magic here by doing Right, let me see if I can jam in the positive so I don't have to hold it. Get in there. Come on. Um, there you go, right. Okay, so I think we're reading 40, 11, 11 something. I mean, look, oh, come on, look, 11, come on, Zelda. 11, 7. And it was charged, fully charged, only 20 minutes ago. Ah, uh, right, okay. I'll throw it back on charge so that we can just do a test run later, but again, it's not the bike's not going to give of its best anyway, is it? With a dud battery, that's not... If the battery's not going to take the charge from the state, then it's never going to be great. So that annoying little issue is actually beneficial, because I'm sure you guys want to see what happens next with this bike in the same way I do. Um, the lever should be ready. Um, I had to kind of do a custom uh, kind of build with the thread rods because they were two different sizes which one of you did suggest um, and so what I did I must have tested it on one side only and not the other and then just assumed it was the same but actually the other side was a reverse thread but that's literally ready to go so in kind of 10 or 15 minutes this bike should technically have an uh, a gear lever now one of the things I didn't account for uh, it's hard to explain if I can find the lever it would be easier is that Gary's lever just brushed the metal here a touch um, honestly really ever so slightly so all I need to do is put a couple of washers within here to bring it out just enough to clear this metal and, and I, I checked that and uh, mocked it up yesterday and that was absolutely fine so that that's good we're good there um, let me go and get it. I'm going to get it all put back together. I'm going to get it put on and we're going to see if we can have a kind of functioning gear lever, which would be pretty cool at this stage, I think. So pressing down would 
we'll pull it. I have to kind of work out where it goes on there, but I will work that out. So let me go and throw that on because it's it's pretty much done already. Let's. All right, guys. Uh, you can hear Rabjab in the background. Rabjab wants to thank all of you for your kind messages. Um, so here's the problem at the moment. Even with a spacer, I'm using these oversized bolts as spacers. Even with spacers, we're hitting, we're too close here basically. Uh, and it's not that side, it's now, it's now this here. Sorry, it's now this here. And it's just skimming, it's working but it's just skimming. I think I'm going to get the Dremel out and take a uh, triangle out of that. Um, because it's not doing anything, it used to hold the side stand switch. Which is gone now, um, otherwise... It's absolutely doing nothing at all. There's no structural component to it. It just held the switch down here. So I'm just taking off this triangle. I'll use the Dremel because I need the Dremel after anyway for Rab Jab's bike. And, um, and then we should be good with the bit of a spacer. It should kind of all do its thing. It just needs enough throw at the moment to be able to clear up here. I've, cl I've, I've cut a touch of this plastic here, which you'd never even notice. Um, and then it used to go to there. So I'll cut along there, I'll cut a triangle off there, get it all bolted and sorted and then we should be able to uh, get that going. I'm just saying to Rabjab now what his next steps are with his bike. Uh, Daniel was saying that, uh, um, just check with the DVLA that no one tried to register it. Um, I think that's good advice. Oh. Right. So I was just showing you my mocked up line there guys, just to show you the cut I'm making. Now I'm going to go and put on my safety equipment goggles and uh, carry on. Uh, it had metal eat through this stuff so quickly so it takes me a while. So I'm going to cut away at my own leisure and I'll let you guys see um, the finish. Okay guys, I'm just warming up the bike. I think the throw is a little bit far. Um, down to first is fine. It's quite a big lift to second. So I think the throw it at the moment is a bit far. Um, but it, I mean, it is doing it. So uh, I just need to get the, um, the fine tuning there right, really. Uh, but for now, I can probably do a very basic test run with it. Um, just to kind of see what we've got. Um, very basic, I, I don't know if this bike has brakes. I, I haven't even tested the, the basics, the horns. The... Let's, let's do a very, very basic test run.
That's better already, guys. Um, it was out two and a half. It likes being out one. I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. Um, it's still tempting to put an airbox on it. There's just a part of me that that does that, you know. Uh, the exhaust smoke has, has burnt off now, which is good. Whatever had dripped. I did clean the arse out of the engine um, yesterday or last week. What was I saying? Uh, a part of me just can't manage all of these nitty bitty grits in grits bits in regards to air cones. I, I just prefer original air boxes. So a part of me is going to consider ordering one um, for my peace of mind. But then other people like that. That it, it is a cool induction sound. Do you like the induction sounds? Yeah, there's no sound. Yeah. Um, so where do we go from here? Um, technically, there's a couple of things. Uh, I need to look back through my videos to see if I've dropped the oil on this. I'm not sure if I have. Uh, and... Uh, tire pressures, I feel like they were low. Mm, front's not too bad. Mm, rear doesn't seem too bad. Um, I'll give the chain a good clean. I'll put the side casing back on. Brakes felt final round, guys. They did, they did need a bit of using. Uh, fronts are low. I'd give them another six months. Rears are... It's hard to see. Yeah, about the same. I'd, I'd change all the pads in six months if this was mine. Tyres have plenty treads. 